mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Bayang maghihiro pero sa silang alam, alam ng puso sa itibuy buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka ng mahihi, sa manlulupi, di ka pasisihil, sa lagat at bunok, sa simoy at sa langit o baka, may lagang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal. Ang isa't ng matawad mo'y tagumpay na nagbibigit, ang bituin na parang na kailan pa may magbibigit. Lupa ng araw ng walang ipasita, buhay na hiksapin ito. Ang hinigaya na pagbay ng hapit, ang mamatay ng lahir sa'yo. kasing taigpauma day imo sa pagpasalamat day hulangon ha panginang lanon. Igpauma day daan imo sa agpanayuon day sa maayad ha kaginhawa, maayad ha kaglawa, maayad ha kagtima. Yan day daan agpanayuon ha ipadiyo kay humanga madaot, kahanlok daw kaguon, ikahid o kaikaw. Dagidagi sa pagtuo daw pagsalig day humanga kamatuuran no, hasikaw gayod permanente taghari taliwada o pagtaliguma na pagkuyanap, kusunod-sunod daw nagkalain-lain hamatang upang hitabo, kagubot, kalisdanan, daw padaot. Ipaaha, ipagudam, daw ipaambit ho mga utawno doon ho banua, nasod, daw tibuok kalibutan, sagagaw, kahidpo, kalinaw, daw kaliguno. Sa iyan man, timaan mo mga kahanggin na pasensya. Lord, I offer my life to you. You can do what you want to do. Just call and feel my life. Feel my darkness with your love. أستجب لكم آمين يا رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الذي لا يضر 
ما اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has absorbed and even gained lives. Give us a grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from all our fears. We pray that you guide the people, especially those tasked, to find a cure for this disease. And for us who are entrusted to take care of our children, the schools and the classrooms. Though they cannot be allowed to go to the schools, we ask your protection and guidance that we may still be able to deliver the learning that they need to have amidst this pandemic. Believing that no one should be left behind in this our spiritual journey the good of our children and for the good of the country and for all the people in the world. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, hello, good morning to everyone. Maayong buntag sa tanan. I hope that everyone is doing fine today and welcome to our activity. My name is Isabel Alano, LR staff, and I will be your host for this morning. So welcome to our first session of Kaagabay Learning Series on Materials Development. We are now live on Depet Tayo, Cagayan de Oro City, Facebook page. Thank you to everyone for spending your morning with us. I hope that everyone is excited and looking forward to what is in store for us today. So before anything else, I would like to give my utmost and deepest respect to our school's division superintendent, Dr. Cherry May Limbaco Reyes, our CID chief, Dr. Loribina C. Carrasco, SGOD chief, Dr. Rosalio Vitorilo, to all the public schools district supervisors, education program supervisors, to our school heads, teachers, to the entire DepEd CTO division, and to everyone who is tuning in with us right now. Good morning to all of you. Our activity for today is entitled Kaagabay. This will be a series of learning sessions starting today, March 11 to April 8, 2022. Each session will be focusing on different learning materials that we can create for our learners, not only for this quarter or school year, but throughout our teaching journeys. And hopefully this platform 
will not only provide a space for you, our dear teachers, to only get additional knowledge and support, but also to be able to share your own best practices that you have been applying and doing in your schools. Pero bago ta magpadayon, I am requesting everyone to like and share this live stream, especially to our teachers, for us to be further inspired in creating learning resources. You could also use the comment section below. So keep your comments coming and later on, if you have any questions, you may input it down below. Now to formally start our event, let us welcome our school's division superintendent, Dr. Cherry May Limbaco Reyes for her message of support to kick off this month-long series. Let's give her a warm round of virtual applause or press the like or heart button as we welcome her on screen. morning! My warmest greetings to everyone. As we continue to navigate the changes brought about by the shift in instruction and gradually settle in the new normal, specifically in the delivery of instruction, learning materials remain to be resources that are needed in providing support and guidance to our teachers and learners alike. Today, we are launching a new series, Kaagabay, aiming to further equip teachers in developing learning materials that they could use in the teaching learning process, be it distance learning or the in-person learning. As our teachers in Kage and the Oro City are very committed, creative, and passionate, this learning series is hoped to provide additional knowledge and support to them in developing materials that are contextualized for their learners, as well as enhancing the existing learning materials that we have to suit to the need of our learners. May it be through offline and online means or face-to-face -face or distance learning. I am very excited to welcome each one of you today as we open our first session. And I am hoping that you will stay and be with us until our last series. Through this, we are hoping that you shall be able to apply all the knowledge and skills for you to create and enhance your own learning resources, your own instructional materials in your respective classes, and in your respective sections. As Secretary Brioni said, education must continue through our collective efforts. We are able to make anything possible for as long as we have the will and the, de and the determination. Know, my dear co-teachers, that the leadership of Deped Kage and the Oro City will journey with you. Good morning again and Take good care of yourself. Thank you for that wonderful message of support, Mom Cherry. This activity would not be made possible without your leadership. Truly, learning materials are important elements in providing instruction to our learners. And we are here to provide support in ensuring that the learning of our students persists. At this point, let us hear from the Curriculum Implementation Division Chief, Dr. Loribina C. Carrasco, to give us her remarks. Let us welcome her on screen. My warmest greetings to all our viewers today. I'd like to thank you for being with us in this first session of Kaagabay. This is another breakthrough for DepEd Cagayan de Oro with the leadership of our school's division superintendent, Dr. Cherry May Limbaco Reyes. 
in the fourth quarter of school year 2021-2022, which is about to start next month, I am pretty sure that learning materials is among the prime considerations in the teaching learning process, even in the new learning modalities that we are implementing. Kaagabay is your gabay, your guide to a plethora of concepts and ideas on materials development. We know that there will always be a gap between the things that teachers want to impart to their learners and the things that learners want to know from them especially during the new normal. The Kaagabay sessions could provide some viable ideas as we increase motivation, as we promote critical and creative thinking, as we make learning more fun with the learning materials that we are using. Kaagabay Learning Series on Materials Development will present interesting insights on localization, utilization of tools, creating video lessons, using interactive audio instruction, creating and designing learning materials, and a whole lot more. Stay with us for all the learning sessions as we continue to pour love and hope in all that we do. Hard work, simply put, is hard work. Allow me to end with my favorite quote from Steve Jobs. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. Always love what you do and do what you love. Thank you and Godspeed. Thank you, Chief Loribina, for that inspiring message. Bridging the gap of our current limitations, it's not just the responsibility of one person. We are all together in minimizing that gap in providing knowledge to our learners. And I hope that the teachers here with us today, as mentioned by Dr. Carrasco, continue to love what you are doing. Finally, let us call on the screen our LRMDS manager of DepEd Cagayan de Oro City, Dr. Joel Dipotane, to introduce to us what this activity is all about. everyone. My warmest greetings to all our viewers uh, today. Of course, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of our school's division superintendent, Dr. Jeremy Elimbaco Reyes, our chiefs uh, from the CID, Dr. Loribina Carrasco, from the SGOD, Dr. Rosalio Vitorillo, and to my LR partners, we have Ma'am Isabel Ann uh, Alano, and we also have Project Development Officer to Ma'am Gemma Pahayon, and our librarian, uh, division librarian, Ma'am Lani Signo, and all the division personnel who have uh, the support for this uh, activity. And to all our teachers, our school heads, our learning partners, our parents, and our learners, maayong buntag sa tanan. And welcome to the first uh, learning episode of Kaagabay. It's a combination of Kaagapay and Gabay. Uh, this uh, learning series will help our teachers on how they are going to enhance the existing learning resources so that it will become tailored fit you know, to the kind of uh, learning of our learners in our respective uh, contexts. And this actually learning series will also give an idea uh, for our teachers on how they can contextualize no, and further localize uh, their learning resources. And we have session on uh, the designing and the development of con uh, learning resources, especially contextualized learning resources. And this activity will also provide an opportunity to our teachers no, to, to present their own localized and contextualized learning resources for the upcoming um, exhibit of the I design and create a learning resources that will happen hopefully on the second week or within the month of April wherein teachers will be showcasing their 
developed and designed uh, contextualized learning resources, whether it could be uh, radio or video lessons or any enhanced or improved learning activity sheets. So we are hopeful that our teachers will be able to present and exhibit their uh, enhanced and improved uh, learning resources. So it will be used not only within no, that context, but could also be adapted to the other contexts, not only within the division of Kagendi Oro City, but hopefully in the other divisions uh, in Region 10. And I am hopeful that these learning resources will be studied because we can really see that and prove that these resources are valid, reliable, and effective. My request to our school leaders that they will support the undertaking of our teacher designers and teacher developers. So they will be motivated to design and come up with a unique kind of learning resources that are really useful and tailored fit to the kind of learners that they have. My warmest thanks to our learning partners who have supported a lot to this kind of undertaking. And my congratulations also to our teachers who have really the heart and passion and commitment to improve their respective practices in their schools. So once again, uh, have a good day and please do take good care of yourself. Joel for introducing Kaagabay to us. We do hope that this series will inspire and help everyone to contextualize and create their learning resources. Let us also look forward to the upcoming exhibit of iDesign and Create Learning Resources next month where we can apply the things that we will learn in this series. Now looking in the comment section, I think everyone is excited for the different activities that we will be having. So I hope that everyone is indeed excited and looking forward. All right, before we proceed to our main event, let us first answer this question. Bakit nga ba kaagabay? The name kaagabay, as mentioned by Dr. Joel, is derived from the two words kaagapay and gabay. As kaagapay means to support and gabay means to guide, this learning series aims to serve as a support sa mga gabay or to the guides of our learners, which are the teachers. And at the same time, it illustrates the function of these learning resources that we use as they support and guide learning. Every teacher is a materials developer, and teachers are very creative and innovative. And you know the lessons and the learners best. That is why you are the best materials developer. As teachers, you are able to know and see what is needed by our learners. And because of that, you are not only the best materials developer, but also the most important learning resource. And we are having this activity to further equip you and to look back on what are the different materials you can utilize. Again, as we start with our session in just a few minutes, a reminder to everyone, if you have any questions for our speaker, you can comment it down below. Let us also use this time to air out any questions or concerns we may have or anything that we are curious about after the talk of our speaker. And don't forget to share and like this live stream. Okay. So for, for, so for our first session this morning, our topic will be on the localization of learning resources. Without further ado, I am very honored and excited to introduce our speaker to you. Our speaker for this morning graduated with the course Bachelor of Science in Education, major in Science and minor in English at Immaculate Conception College. She then acquired her Master's in Education at Medina College and her doctorate degree in education in Misamis University. She received the Most Outstanding Public School Teacher Award, second runner-up in the regional level in the year 2012 to 2013. She also received the Most Outstanding Master Teacher in both division and regional levels. 
in 2015, she conducted a research titled Learning Resource Management and Development System Empowers Teachers in Constructing Quality Instructional Materials. Currently, she is the Education Program Supervisor of the Learning Resource Management and Development Section in the Department of Education, Schools Division of Ozamis City. Everyone, help me welcome Dr. May P. Adulantes. Let us all give her a resounding round of virtual applause and press the like or heart button as we welcome her on our screen. Ayan. Hello, Dr. Okay. May. Good morning. The virtual floor is yours, ma'am. Thank you so much, Ma'am Isabel, and good morning, everyone. My salute to the school's division superintendent of Cagayan de Oro City, Dr. Jeremy Limbaco Reyes, our CID chief, Dr. Lurubina Carrasco, our SGOD chief, Dr. Rosalio Vitorilio, of course, the entire Cagayan de Oro City Division family, teachers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like also to take uh, this opportunity, of course, to thank my school's division superintendent, Ma'am Jean G. Veloso, for allowing me to be part of this endeavor. And of course, my CID chief, Ma'am uh, Anakleta Gakasan. Thank you so much. Let me share to you my screen. My topic th this morning is on localization and indigenization of learning resources. However, before we will start uh, the discussion on localization of learning resources, I am inviting everyone to visit to www.menti.com and use the code 5998-2887 and answer the question, what are words related to contextualization? So when we think of contextualization, what are other words that would relate to contextualization? Once again, I am inviting all of you to take part in this activity. Just log into menti.com and use the code 59982887. So again, inviting every, everyone to log in to www.menti.com and use the code 5998-2887 and answer the question, what are words related to contextualization? It could be the effect of contextualization, or it could be words that would relate to contextualization. Again, inviting everyone, just log in to menti.com and use the code 59982887. Thank you so much. So some of our participants are already sharing uh, their answers. So right now, we have the word localization. We also have the word appropriateness, tailor fit. Okay, come on. Still inviting all of you to participate in this uh, activity. Uh, just log in to uh, menti.com and use the code 59982887 and answer the question, what are words? related to contextualization. Still, I am welcoming everyone to participate. We still have two minutes. I'm giving you two, two minutes to participate in this activity. So in our word cloud, we are already uh, forming our word cloud. 
more participation, please, from our teachers out there. Again, inviting all our teachers, inviting everyone to participate. Uh, words that would relate to contextualization. Okay, we have the tailor fit, localized, localization, local setting, appropriateness. Actually, all of these words are related to our topic on contextualization. Okay, learner-centered, of course, when we contextualize our materials, when we localize our materials, these are, of course, learner-centered. Okay, so we have local setting, more participation from our audience. You still have time. Again, log in to menti.com and use the code 59982887. So we have also unique, okay, unique to a particular uh, group of students. All right. So come on, still inviting everyone. We are already forming our word cloud, but the biggest word here is localization. Yes, when we contextualize, we localize materials. Come on, you still have one minute to participate. Cast your answer to the question, what are words related to contextualization? By the way, I would like to thank those uh, who participated in this uh, activity. But still inviting everyone to still participate uh, by answering the question, what are words related to contextualization? So to participate, you have to log into menti.com and use the code 59982887. Okay. So we have here... Uh, Answers like link to pupil's background, correct? When we contextualize, we of course relate the competency to our pupil's background. Okay, one of a kind, okay, one of a kind. It is related to, of course, language. We have communication, local setting, tailor fit. We have appropriateness. Okay, thank you so much for those who participated. So when we contextualize, we localize. The biggest word in our word cloud is actually localization. And you are right because contextualization is related to localization. So thank you so much for participating in our activity, in our first activity. Okay. So again, thank you so much for, for the participation to our teachers. Thank you so much. So this morning, actually, we will be discussing on localization and indigenization of our learning materials, of our learning resources. And hopefully, at the end of my sharing, we will be able to achieve the following objectives. First, explain the relationship among the terms contextualization, localization, and indigenization. What's the difference between these three words? Okay. Discuss various ways of localizing learning materials. So, of course, after knowing the three, we are going to focus our discussion on the localization of our learning materials. Show deeper understanding of the process of developing localizing and enhancing learning materials in the implementation of basic education, particularly in this time of COVID-19. So I'm hoping that we will be able to achieve these objectives after my sharing. But before anything else, let me discuss to you the policy basis why we contextualize why we localized, why we indigenize our curriculum and our learning resources. 
first is, of course, the Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001, that is Republic Act 9155, Section 2, encourage local initiatives for improving the quality of basic education. The Department of Education in the regional and division levels strengthen the delivery of basic education through local initiatives. And of course, one of these is the localization and indigenization of our learning materials. The various initiatives, the various programs implemented show the values, needs, and aspirations of our school, of our division, and of our region. And the school is empowered to make decisions with regards to this matter, of course, for the benefits of our learners. Because as we all know, our learners are, of course, the center of the entire educative process, right? Another legal basis for this is Republic Act 10533, and this is the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013, which states that Deep Ed shall adhere to the following standards and principles in developing the enhanced basic curriculum under letter D, which is contextualized and global. So it is emphasized that the school to improve the delivery of our curriculum can contextualize in consonance with the standards and principles of basic education. It is indeed a challenge to all of us, a challenge to our teachers to part to really indigenize, to really contextualize their materials, particularly in this time of COVID-19, to ensure the continuity of basic education. As our secretary said, education must continue. Letter H also of Republic Act 10533, the curriculum shall be flexible enough to enable and allow schools to localize, indigenize, and enhance the same based on their respective educational and social context. So that uh, shows the flexibility of the K-12 curriculum to allow enhancement at the local level. So that is at the school level, at the division, and re the regional level to fit to the diverse background of our learners. So we can always, as what you have mentioned, tailor fit our materials to the type of learners we have. And later, we will be discussing on how we can tailor fit how we can contextualize by localizing and indigenizing our materials. So this graphic organizer shows the two legal bases for the contextualization of our materials. We have the Governance of Basic Education Act, and that is Republic Act 9155, and the K-12 curriculum, that is Republic Act 10533. And contextualizing always highlights the local levels. So to be able to contextualize, our teachers have to be, uh, have to be, uh, have to, uh, the, our teachers should know the situations, the local situations, okay? So what are the key concepts? As you have mentioned a while ago in our word cloud, we have localization. You haven't mentioned indigenization, but indigenization also is part of contextualization. So we will be discussing at this moment the key concepts which include 
contextualization, localization, and indigenization. So what is contextualization? It refers to the educational process of relating the curriculum to a particular setting, situation, or area of application to make the competencies relevant, meaningful, and useful to all learners. So to contextualize or the extent of contextualization depends on the familiarity of our teachers with the community. Okay? It depends on the background of our learners in a particular class. It depends on the setting and the situation of the community. So to contextualize, our teachers must have the know-how, must be familiar with the community where the school is. So this illustration shows that our K-12 curriculum, to contextualize it, must we must relate it to the particular setting, to the local setting. It must be related to the situation of the where the community is. We must relate it to area of application. And with this, this make the com the, the, com the curriculum, even our learning materials, meaningful, relevant, and useful to our learners. So with that, learners become more engaged with the materials that we provide and better learning is achieved. The degree of contextualization may be described and distinguished into localization and indigenization. So what is localization then? Localization refers to the process of relating learning content specified in the curriculum to local information and materials in the learner's community. So the learning content to develop the competency, this must be related or we are going to use local information or local materials using local information and local materials will of course make it more relevant to our learners as we discuss the topic it will make the topic more meaningful to our learners and more useful so in localization, we integrate local information and local materials in developing the particular competencies of that certain learning topic or learning content. For example, in Araling Pandipunan 10, second quarter, the content is mga isyong pang kapaligiran at pang ekonomiya with the performance standards na kabubuo ng pagsusoring papil sa mga isyong pang-ekonomiyang nakakaapikto sa kanilang pamumuhay. Now, how can this be contextualized? One of which is by giving a project. What would be the project? Allow our learners to make a plan using local materials, using uh, with the materials or the product available in the locality. So if there are suman, if there are manga, or anumang produkto na nasa lokalidad, re require our learners to make uh, a plan how to improve this, uh, this suman industry, okay? Or industry on mango, uh, or uh, on mango production. So that's it. So you have to relate the competency to the local products or to the local information. That is the context of 
contextualization or I, what I mean is localization. Another key concept is indigenization. Indigenization refers to the process of enhancing curriculum competencies, education resources, and teaching learning processes in relation to the biogeographical, historical, and socio-cultural context of the learner's community. Like for example, let me use my uh, own place. In our place, we have our IP group, which is the Subanin. So integrating how uh, the Subanin lives, their lifestyle, integrating their beliefs, integrating their culture into the content of the lesson that is already indigenization. Okay? To give you uh, a clear vision of what is localization and indigenization, let me present to you this uh, example. The competency is visualizes, represents, and identifies unit of fractions with denominators of 10 and below. This is for math grade 2, third quarter. How can we localize uh, this? By using local materials. Fruits in season like watermelon or if you have local takanin like bibingka to visualize fractions. For a watermelon, you can slice equally into 10 equal parts. And then you take two parts of it. So what is left? So, so we have eight. And how many parts? The total parts, 10. So what is the fraction? Eight over 10 or eight, 10. So that is already localization. You use uh, local materials. What about indigenization? Community cultural practices that involve fractions are used to visualize fractions. For example, uh, most of our indigenous people, uh, our Subanian, for example, cultivate vast uh, area of land. And during... So let us say... Let's divide. Give a situation. Let's divide this vast area into five. And on the second day, the two parts were harvested. So how many parts are left? Three. And how many parts in all? Five. So that is how we visualize fractions through indigenization. So we make use of their cultural practices. I hope this gives you a clear idea on the differences between localization and indigenization. So we have the three uh, main concepts, contextualization, localization, and indigenization. Contextualization is actually the umbrella of localization and indigenization. So talking about localization, we use local products. We integrate local information in the development of our learning resources. That is localization. Indigenization, on the other hand, is integrating the practices, the beliefs, the way of living of a particular group in that place in the development of the content or of the lesson. So with this, we could say that as we move deeper into the community's context, we are moving towards indigenization. So it's not just uh, making use of what is found in the locality, what information is available in the locality, but you move deeper towards the, the people living in the community, their culture, their way of living, their beliefs, their practices. 
that becomes indigenization. Let me give you other examples of localization. Let me focus my discussion on localization. Uh, how to localize. Examples used in the lessons start with those in the locality. What I'm showing you is actually an aralin, an activity for Araling Panlipunan 1, which is about the dreams, the ambitions of our grade 1 learners. And in here, uh, showing pictures of successful individuals. But showing these pictures may, may not give uh, meaning to our learners because they do not know this personality except for Leia Salonga and Manny Pacquiao who are always found on TV. We have Dr. Jose Rizal whose picture is posted on the walls of our school, but the rest are not very familiar uh, to our learners. So to to localize this, we might include persons who are successful in our community in their own fields, like a successful entrepreneur, where everybody knows in the community. That is localization. Okay, that is how we can localize our materials. Another is this, local materials are used as often as possible in making instructional materials. I have already mentioned this a while ago, but when I was still a teacher, I am a science teacher uh, of the secondary, of uh, high school students. I usually end my discussion on plant and animal cells by requiring my learners to make a, a project, a form of a project, uh, differentiating plants and animal, uh, animal cells using uh, materials found in the locality. So my learners will then be very excited to get uh, like seeds, like uh, bagon, the, the, the vine, okay? And other common materials in the locality where they can use it as part of their plant and animal cell. So in that way, I am localizing the, the, uh, the, the competency using the available materials in the locality. And I've noticed that my students are very eager, very excited, and very motivated in doing the activity and they even share their materials with other classmates so at the end of the class most of them has similar output because they are also sharing at the same time materials with their classmates so you see there the competency is mastered with the use of the local materials and that has more meaning to them that makes the the content relevant to them. That makes the content useful to our learners. That is what localization can do to our teaching. Another example, names, situations, setting needed to give context to test questions or problem-solving exercises are those of the immediate community. For example, in the competency, visualize the ratio of two given numbers in constructing our test questions or in providing problem-solving exercises, use observable examples in the locality. So just like in this competency for math 5, that is for ratio. So if there are plenty of jeepneys available, like in Cagayan de Oro City, so one jeep, to be able for the jeep to run, it needs four wheels, right? So what's the ratio? One is to four. So they are able to visualize. If a cariton is 
uh, observable in the locality. So one cariton has how many whales? Two. So what's the ratio? One is to two. In our place, there are plenty of tricycles. So we have one tricycle for it to run. It needs three whales. So what is the ratio? One is to three. That depends on what is the common uh, or observable examples in our locality. So and that is another way of how to contextualize. So in constructing our questions, particularly during the pre or the post, uh, post assessment, we can always use uh, common examples in the locality. Another way of contextualizing our material is use local stories, especially in language areas in Filipino and in uh, English. So patronize our own stories. And I know that there are plenty of storybooks that our teachers have made. So use them. Okay. In our division, we have si Ibong Tereret, written by one of our teachers. We have si Biboy at si Bansay, si Ana at ang kanyang Harden. We have ang mga kain ni Jano. So these uh, are just few of the storybooks written by our teachers and illustrated by our teachers. Might as well patronize our own storybooks because most of them are contextualized and what I mean, localized. The setting are very local, okay? Another is translating stories, sentences, paragraphs written in another language to the language of one's learners for use in MTB MLE. By the way, I'm very thankful for Region 10, headed by our RD, RD Arturo Bayukot, for heading, spearheading the contextualization, the making of our modules for use, especially in this uh, blended uh, delivery mode. So thank you so much, RD, and the entire uh, Region 10 family for these modules. So for MTB MLE, we have modules for kindergarten to grade three, and even in the high school and in the senior high school, we have complete materials because of this. And the content of these materials are mostly localized. Now, let me give you some reminders on the contextualization of learning materials. One. Localization and contextualization, indigenization, can be done in all learning areas at all grade levels. Okay? However, there are competencies that is really hard to contextualize, that is really hard to localize and indigenize. Let us not force to contextualize it. But there are really competencies that can be easily localized and indigenized, okay? Localization maximizes the use of available materials. As I have explained, in localization, we use materials readily available in our locality. We use information in our locality, okay? So that is localization. Third, to contextualize, Teachers must use authentic materials, materials found in the locality, and anchor teaching on the context of the learners' lives. Because I believe that if we contextualize our materials, it makes uh, the it makes uh, it, of course, um, more meaningful, more relevant to the lives of our learners. And of course, this will also address to the diverse needs of our learners. So 
contextualizing, making it more engaging, and our learners become more motivated to do the different activities that we are going to give to our learners. Then, teachers must build on what resources the school have. Of course, start with the materials found in our school, found in our locality. I remember when I was also still a teacher, when discussing acids and bases, especially we do not have uh, materials to test uh, acids and bases, I used peelings of eggplant, boil that one, and that can be used as indicator for acids and bases. I have used that as indicator for acids and bases. So these eggplants are just found in our school garden. So I am localizing it, okay? Teachers must accommodate and respect cultural, linguistic, and racial diversity. This is very important. When we indigenize, we must respect the culture of our of the people around. We must also respect that the racial diversity. Okay? So make sure that when we localize, when we contextualize material, it also fits to the vi the diverse uh, learners we have in our class. Now let me uh, show to you how can we contextualize our modules. Although some of our modules are already very localized, but there are still things that we can make to really localize our modules. As we all know, our modules uh, consist of the following parts, the inside page from the assessment to lesson proper to the post-assessment, okay? So these are the parts of the module. Let me show you an example of how to uh, localize our module. I'm showing to you module for English 5. Uh, this is a lesson in the first quarter. This is the review part. Look at the sentences. Okay, how can we still contextualize the sentences? Like number one, this college has five labs. How to contextualize the sentence? By being so general like this college, we can use specific institution in our locality. For example, Misamis Oriental National High School has five computer lab labs. Okay. So that is a way of localizing the sentences, our, uh, the, the, the activities stipulated in our module. Also, the second one, can we localize it? But in here, you have a very general statement, which is their company spends a lot of money on ads. So instead of being so general, we can uh, write name, of substitute it with names of companies found in, in, in our locality. That is a way of uh, using local information in the sentences in our uh, in our in the different activities uh, that is that are found in our module. Okay, I'm showing you here again what's more activity. So encircle the clip word in each sentence and provide its full form so the short term so i think uh, numbers one and two learners can really relate on them na so there's no need to localize but we can still localize number three instead of using uh, the university why not use a specific university in your locality in Cagayan de Oro, for example, father used to stay in a dorm near the Capital University where he studied. So that is localization. Uh, we localize our sentences. Okay. Kyle 
rides a mountain bike to the hill. So, to localize it, Kyle rides a mountain bike to Cagayan de Oro Park. Okay. The cheering contest will take place at the gym. So, to localize it further, the cheering contest will take place at the USTP gym. So, that's it. Those are, uh, of course, localizing the, the sentences, uh, localizing the situation by using local information. Then we have here um, a story. Okay, a story. The story is actually uh, contextualized already. Ang kapistahan ng hulong duhat because we all experience fiesta, fiesta ng bayan or fiesta ng ating uh, lugar. So, but however, we can again patronize our own materials, our own storybooks because these are made by, of course, our teachers and the, the situations in the storybooks are localized. So, we can contextualize it further using our very own storybooks. So, with that, our teachers will also feel proud that their stories are used in, uh, in the module or their stories are used in the discussion of the lessons. That's it. Tangkilikin ang sariling atin, di ba? Let me share to you what Undersecretary Dina S. Ocampo before uh, said about contextualization. The best curricula is contextualized by those implementing it. And who are implementing the curriculum? The teachers. The teachers are in the best uh, authority to contextualize our curriculum, to contextualize our learning materials because they are the one who are very familiar with the locality where they teach. Further, she said, it is not, uh, it is now up to us to ensure that this enhanced curriculum truly transform, uh, transforms our schools and community. With the best of our abilities, let us do what we can do for the Filipino learners. So you see, it's quite challenging to us to do contextualization in terms of our learning resources, to do contextualization uh, in terms of the, of the curriculum. And contextualization, of course, happen in our level in the school, in the division, and even in the regional level. Let me invite all of you to again participate in this activity by logging in to menti.com and use the code 13549237. I'd like you to express your commitment in relation to contextualization, in relation to localization and indigenization of our learning materials. I have already presented to you examples on how we could contextualize, how we could localize our materials. Now, I'm challenging all of you. Are you, are you now ready for this uh, call of contextualizing, of localizing, of indigenizing our local materials. I am inviting all of you again to visit to menti.com and use the code 13549237 and express your commitment in relation to contextualization.
again, express your commitment. Your commitment in, in sentence, in a sentence, or in phrases regarding contextualization of learning resources. Okay, so to contextualize, it should be unique. We have also to scrutinize. We have to use available materials. But how committed are we in doing this at our level? Because as what I have mentioned a while ago, you are in the right position to contextualize our materials. You are in the right position to localize and indigenize our learning resources. So express your commitment in contextualizing, in localizing, in indigenizing our learning materials. Again, I am inviting everyone to log in to menti.com and use the code 13549237. So thank you so much. We have here one sharer, another sharer, I mean. I will do my best to understand the context of my learners. Very good. So thank you for that commitment to do your best to understand your learners in their context. Okay? With that, our learners would be very happy. And with that, I know learning would become more fun. Learning will be tailored fit to the context of our learners. Okay? Thank you so much. Uh, more uh, sharing. More sharing from uh, the teachers out there watching us. So, yes, we can do it. Thank you. Yes, we can do it. Together, we do wonders. Correct. So, together, we can do more. We can do it as we do it together. Thank you so much for that commitment of uh, contextualizing, for that commitment of localizing and indigenizing our materials, making it uh, meaningful, relevant, and useful to our learners. Another uh, answer here, to always respect the culture and context of our learners, correct? We must always respect the culture and context of our learners as we do indigenization. I'll do it to make learning become more meaningful and relevant. Thank you for that commitment. Contextualization would surely make the lesson more meaningful and interesting for the learners. Thus, it must be always be observed implemented by the teachers, okay? When conducting teaching learning process. Thank you for those commitments you have. Still, we have, I'm giving you two minutes to write your commitment so I could read your commitment. I know that together with us in the LR, uh, we can help you and together with our partnership, we can make teaching and learning more fun with the contextualized materials we are using in the teaching and learning process. So thank you so much for those who share. So we have here another answer. As a teacher, I will do my best to understand my learners. That's it. We have to understand our learners because to make it meaningful, to make it relevant, and to make it useful in the lives of our learners, we have to understand them. And to understand them is to contextualize, of course, our learning materials. Thank you so much, everyone, for those who participated in this activity. Thank you so much. Okay. 
Let me end my talk with a quote from Paul Mayer. Productivity is never an accident. You see, we have to work for it. It is always the result of a commitment to excellence, intelligent planning, and focused effort. With that, I would say, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. I hope you learned something from my sharing today. So thank you so much. And we have the references. Thank you and God bless everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, SDS Cherry May Limbaco and Chief uh, CID Chief Loribena Carrasco. Of course, our OD Chief, Sir Rosalio Vitorilo, and the entire CDO family. Thank you so much. And then God bless everyone. Thank you very much, Ma'am May, for that very informative session. So in her session, we were able to know the difference of contextualization, indigenization, and localization. And truly, it is important to make our learning materials meaningful, relevant, and useful to our learners. Now, for this part, I am opening the floor to hear some questions, if you have any questions from the audience. So you can comment your questions in the comment section, and I will be reading out a handful to ask to Doc May. So while waiting for the questions of our teachers, I could start first. Um, I could start with the first question. So a question that I have, as I was learning, I uh, was listening to you, ma'am, and it was very informative. No, and I was very inspired to create, you know, learning resources. And I know for sure our teachers are also inspired if not more so my question ma'am um what can you advise our teachers who are planning to make their own localized learning resources actually i am inspiring all of you to localize your resources uh, submit this localized resources to your lr for further evaluation so that these localized resources will be used not only by yourself, but of course by other teachers. You can share it to the entire division, uh, CDO division uh, teaching, teaching. Okay, so I am uh, I am advising you to make a proposal on that particular learning resources. Submit the proposal. So, of course, the division for approval and then use it in your class. And that can be a good source of research, right? That can be a good source of research or it could be uh, an initiative no? or an innovation that you can do and you can share to the entire CDO family. So, with that, you can also use that for promotion. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you are inspired. Thank you for that um, answer, ma'am. I hope that the teachers out there who are planning will be inspired and submit their learning resources here at the LR. So I'll be checking the comments if um, our audience have any questions for ma'am. Okay. So teachers and all those who are watching, you could input our, your question so that we could ask um, Dr. May. Let's see. Okay. So if there are no questions from our audience, I would have I would like to ask another questions. <laughs> another question, I meant. So ma'am, okay. um, what can you say are the things that um the teachers should keep in mind when they are creating their learning material? So what should they not do um in creating the localized and contextualized learning materials? When we contextualize our materials, we must put into consideration the learner, the learner's context, in the learner's context, right? We must take into consideration what are the available materials in our locality. So 
if we contextualize, we, we must refer to local information, local products in the community. So never use materials that are hard to find when we contextualize because that is not contextualization, right? So use materials that are readily available uh, for our learners to use. That's it. So thank you very much again, ma'am, for that um, answer. So teachers take note, no? So let us not use materials that are hard to find para hindi rin natin pahirapan yung sarili natin in looking for these materials. So lastly, um, oh, there is a question here in the chat box. Isn't it enough to contextualize because by then you are localizing the lessons already? So I think what um, this meant is, um, is it, what's the difference between the contextualization and, um, and localization, ma'am? Actually, contextualization is the umbrella, okay? It's the big uh, picture of what uh, we do with our, with our materials. It's the umbrella of localization and indigenization. So under contextualization is localization and indigenization. So if you think the materials are already localized, so that's it, be it. So no need to contextualize further because it's already localized. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am, for um, spending time to answer the questions of our audience. Now, if there are no more questions, let us give Doc May another round of applause. Thank you so much, Doc May, for gracing us with your presence and for sharing your time and knowledge with us this morning. Now, let me present the Certificate of Recognition. Let me share my screen. Okay. Let me read the citation of the certificate. So this certificate is presented to Doc May P. Edulantes for sharing her time and expertise as resource speaker on the topic localization of learning resources, design and development during the Kaagabay Learning Series on Materials Development. Given this 11th day of March 2022 at Cagayan de Oro City Division, Cagayan de Oro City, Philippines. Signed by our school's division superintendent, Dr. Cherry May Limbaco Reyes. So thank okay. you again, Doc May. I am sure our teachers who are tuning in were able to learn a lot from you, including myself. Okay. And I hope that you have a wonderful day ahead and take care always, ma'am. Thank you so okay. much, ma'am. Let me take uh, this opportunity also to, to thank uh, SDS Cherry May Limbaco Reyes for this opportunity. It's a great opportunity for me also to share with our Cagayan de Oro teachers on this topic. Thank you so much for the trust and confidence. And of course, to my friend in the LR team of Cagayan de Oro, Doc Joel and the rest of the team. Thank you so much for uh, the CID chief. Dr. Loribina Carrasco, thank you so much for the trust and confidence. And of course, I would like also to thank my SDS for allowing me to, to be part of this endeavor. Thank you so much, SDS Jean G. Veloso, with our ASDS also, Mamai uh, Mibato. And of course, my CID chief. Chief Anacleta Gakasan and my CID family, thank you so much for the support. Everyone, thank you so much. It's really a great time for me here to share this with you. Thank you so much and God bless everyone. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay, so wow, grabe ka in-depth and informative ang session ni Doc May sa atin. Ako, personally, I was very inspired by what she has shared. And given the chance, I would want to also enhance the existing learning materials that I have created, applying what we have learned. And I know kayo po, mga teachers, are as inspired, if not even more. And I am looking forward to see your new innovations. So before we end, or as we come to an end to our activity, please don't forget to answer um, the attendance slash evaluation form that I'll be showing in the screen. Okay. 
you could simply go to the comment section also and look for the comment to access it. So I'll be sending our attendance and evaluation link. And lastly, please also don't forget to join us next week for another series on March, uh, for another session on March 18, 2022, here in Depet Tayo, Cagayan de Oro City Facebook page. So this now concludes our session this morning. Thank you once again to everyone who joined us for this activity that is headed by our LRMDS manager, Dr. Joel Dipotane. So thank you very much, Sir Joel, to the LR team, Ma'am Gemma Pahayon and Ma'am Lani Signo, to Sir Alan Gibone, Sir Dave Tan, of course, to our school's division superintendent, Dr. Cherry May Limbaco Reyes, our CID chief, Dr. Loribina Carrasco, and to everyone who helped in making this activity possible. We will be seeing you again next week for another session of Kaagabay. So daghang salamat sa pag-uban, Karong Adlawa. Keep safe and happy Friday to everyone.